tib fib or AP lower leg, um, we would have the patient change. We need to get from the knee to the ankle. As you can imagine, that's really big, really long. Uh, 14 by 17 is not going to work um, in that instance. So we're going to cock our um, cassette so that we, we can use the diagonal axis of the cassette to help us. We're going to center to the mid tib fib. Now, we're supposed to be at 40 inch SID, but that's not really going to work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase my SID a little bit to kind of give me more divergence of the beam um, just to help me out. So I didn't have to go up much. I went up three inches. Um, we're still going to keep our um, marker on the lateral aspect. We do need to get from the ankle. So here's the malleolus. So I know I'm going to get on um, the ankle. And here is um, the apex of her patella. So I know I'll get the knee. So I'm going to actually call me in so that way I'm actually just on the board. So here's the corner of the board and here's the corner of the board. So I know I'm not um, exposing anything needlessly. You do need to have the patient's toes straight up in the air. If you relax them out to the side, the patella will go to that side and this will not be true AP, neither will the ankle. You make sure that that's most of the time what happens, the patient just relaxes out. So you make sure that they're nice and straight. For the lateral lower leg, we're going to use the same um, concept where we're going to use the diagonal axis of the IR to help us here. So we're going to need to get from the ankle to the tib fib, or excuse me, from the ankle to the knee. And I know that my um, 43 inch SID worked for me last time, so I'm just going to keep the same um, SID. I have light in the back and light in the front. I'm going to keep my marker on the lateral side. So you want to try to get the knee as lateral as you can and make sure the ankle stays lateral. So that's about lateral there. I am going to open my collimation just a little bit though. Okay. For an AP knee, we're going to be at a 40 inch SID. We're going to use a 10 by 12 cassette. Now in your book it talks about um, different thicknesses of the knee needing different angles. Most adults you're going to use um, a 5 degree angle on, sorry I'm short and I can't see, that's 25 inches, or 5 degrees rather. So we're going to be centered a half an inch below the apex of the patella, so here's the patella. That's about a half an inch um, below the apex, so you want that to go right through the joint of the knee. We're going to keep our mar marker on the lateral aspect here, and we're going to collimate so that we're not just radiating everything needlessly. The toes need to be straight up in the air, so that way you're, you don't have any rotation of the epicondyles. For um, an oblique knee, we're going to do a medial rotation. You're going to rotate the knee in 45 degrees. So here's the patella here. We're still going to be centered a half an inch below the apex of the patella. And what we want to do is we want to open up the joint space between the um, tibia and the fibula. And we're still going to keep our five degree angle on the oblique. Okay. For the lateral knee, you're going to have the patient roll all the way onto the affected side. So since we're doing her left knee, she's going to roll all the way onto her left side. And have the patient bring their unaffected leg across. You're going to flex the knee 20 to 30 degrees. I'm just going to adjust my cassette here. Now I like to feel for the patella to make sure that the patella is um, nice and lateral. I'm going to have you roll forward just a smidge. There we go. 
You can also feel the epicondyles, make sure they're on top of one another. Um, sometimes, um, in, depending on your patient, that's a little harder to feel for. So I prefer to feel for the patella. I'm gonna move the table down. And you wanna be centered an inch inferior to the um, femoral condyles. Um, and you can keep your um, five degree angle on the lateral. The lateral should have a five to seven degree angle. But I think for our patient now, a five degree angle is sufficient. And that would be your lateral knee. For the sunrise view, um, or the setagast method, we're going to have the patient um, seated with their knee flexed as much as they can. I'm going to have um, our patient help me with the cassette here, so we'll make sure first and foremost that it's um, centered. Um, you can do it one of two ways. You can either have the patient have it relaxed down like this or like this. I prefer this way because of the OID, you get a little bit more magnification. Now you want to be 10 to 15 degrees from the leg. That tends to give you um, the best image of the patellofemoral space. Oh, sorry, I'm going here. You want to keep your 40 inch SIV. Um, I move my tube back more, but let me move the table here. That's about 40 inches without a measuring tape here. I can't really tell, but that's about right. And what you're going to do is you're going to center right to the patella femoral space, which here's her patella, here's the apex, and I am just right at the apex. So I know I'm going right through that space. So your collimation should look pretty similar to that. And I still want to be centered to my cassette, so I'm going to move this down just a little bit and move my marker so that it'll actually make it into, well, that didn't make it in. And I like to just check, that's about, about 15 degrees or so from the, from the leg. So obviously the amount of angle is going to vary because if my patient's leg all they can extend it is this much my angle is going to be different than if they can extend it this much so you don't want to have them overextend either because that will close the joint space so this is a pretty fair approximation of what the sunrise would look like 